With so much content whizzing around out there, there's only one storytelling platform that helps you keep calm and stay informed and inspired. Flipboard. Flipboard curates the world's stories so you can be smarter in your work, life, and play. Choose from thousands of topics to personalize Flipboard and get the latest stories from the best publishers and experts delivered to you 24-7. When you see stories you want to save or share, tap the plus button to add them to private or public collections. It's that simple. Used by millions of people every day, Flipboard is how people move themselves and the world forward. Get started now at Flipboard.com. It's the E-Commerce Minute, your daily dose of e-commerce, tech, and retail news with your hosts, Bart Moraz and John Suter. The E-Commerce Minute is a production of Sumo Heavy, a digital commerce consulting firm in Brooklyn, New York, and Philadelphia. Find us on the web at sumoheavy.com. It's E-Commerce Minute, episode 333. In today's episode, Lyft's monthly subscription goes nationwide. Competition is fierce in the ride-sharing industry. Each service wants you to abandon your car and use them as your sole means of transportation. Last week, Lyft unveiled their all-access pass. The plan costs $290 up front. Riders can take 30 rides each month as long as those rides cost $15 or less. If you take a more expensive ride, you have to pay the difference. The 31st ride and on for the rest of the month are discounted 5%. Unused rides don't carry over to the next month. The plan was previously being beta tested and has now been released nationwide. Lyft said in the announcement, this is the first step towards delivering on our goal of making car ownership optional, and we're constantly looking for more ways to provide passengers with the easiest, most convenient options possible, end quote. Rival Uber is testing a similar service. Details and pricing vary, but riders typically pay between $4.99 and $15.99 for a flat discount on eligible fares. Last month, Lyft announced the expansion of their Ditch Your Car initiative. The challenge asked residents in 35 cities to give up their car for one month in exchange for a certain amount of credit to be used for Lyft shared rides, bike share, and car share trips, as well as bus and subway fare passes. Lyft's ultimate goal is that you'll abandon your personal car and use Lyft exclusively every month. Both Lyft and Uber are heading towards Big IPOs in 2019. First of all, this is episode 333. This is kind of crazy. Just want to mention that. Um, Two, um, this is kind of fun. The only problem I see with this, if your fare every day is more than $15, that's kind of sucky. Yeah, I think this is only only for a certain type of a Lyft rider. Um, The problem is like in New York, obviously you can do this. Because you're, you know, you're going cross town and it's going to yeah, cost you 15 lot, bucks. And you're doing a lot of shorter rides, right? But it's going to cost you the 15 bucks just to go across town. Whereas, say, in Philadelphia, it's $7 everywhere. Ah, <laughs> uh, right. So you might lose money on the deal. Yeah. So that's, that's a bit of a problem. So uh, shorter, this, I mean, for me, you know, I walk to work every day. So unless occasionally take a, like an Uber if I'm late for something, but still $7 though. Yeah. That's yeah, not um, cheap. I don't know. It's it's interesting how they're trying to do this. Obviously, it makes sense. I also haven't owned a car in 15 years, so I understand how this works. Yeah, um, that's, they're, they're aiming towards the urban dweller who does not own a car. And I think once you factor in, we always say this when we do ride share shows, insurance, maintenance, all kinds of mm-hmm. stuff. I'm dealing with a bunch of crap with my car this weekend, and I'm just like, you know, I like I read an article, I write an article like this, and I'm like, ugh. <laughs> if only I could just get rid of my car. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, you live in a place that you need a car. There's no if. The, yep. You just can't deal with it. We have a I low mean, walk score, as they say. No, it's it's bad. You're stuck. <laughs> stuck. Um, so, I mean, in some cities, I think that'd be good if you, if you need that transportation. I mean, there's plenty of companies, like, especially in New York, like, they'll have, you know, there's Lyft and Uber, obviously, but there's also Juno and, and there's Via and there's a whole bunch of different ways of going about it. Um, and Via, I think you can use your, um, your worker, uh, your work credit type things. Oh, uh, right. If they give you like a, a voucher for travel. Uh, it's not voucher. It's the pre-tax money, the travel money. Right. Um, so instead of using the subway, you can just use it for that. Right. Um, it's basically, if you do that every day, it's double the cost, but sometimes it's just faster. Yeah, no, that's true. And I think one of the challenges they have here is they're asking someone to pay $300 a month. So it's got to be somebody who consistently uses either Uber or Lyft and they would say, okay, for, well, for this, I'm not going to use Uber this month. I'm going to try Lyft. Mm-hmm. I think one of the big problems is it's something that has a variable cost, meaning I, I don't know if my ride's going to be 7 or $15 and mm-hmm. they're trying to put a fixed price on it. 
And one of the articles said, you're asking, <laughs> you're asking consumers to do men- mental math gymnastics to figure out if it's worth it. <laughs> right. I think a lot of people are too lazy to figure it out. Right. So, I mean, you're looking at it as, you know, it's $300 plus $15 or less, right? I think one of the articles was like, as long as your rides are over 10 bucks, you kind of win on it um, if you take a lot of rides. But um, this is where, you know, it gets tricky. And even if you go over the the amount, you're still getting a discount on rides. Mm-hmm. So again, we'll beat a dead horse. If you're a, a heavy Lyft slash Uber rider, you may want to consider this over Uber. That being said, mm-hmm. when you look at the $300 cost, we did a few episodes on the car companies that are doing the, uh, what, what did we call that? Subscription or? The subscription, subscription, yeah. subscription service for the, for, I think the GM was doing it. Uh, Mercedes is going to do it. That's a little bit more, of, of course. Uh, but I think a lot more car companies are going to get into that. And they're going to look at this and say $300. Well, that's a typical car payment. Maybe someone will say, you know what? I can only get 15 rides for $300. But if I have my own car, again, you have to put in the cost of garaging it and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But somebody like me who lives in an area where I can actually park my freaking car and not have to pay for it. This might make sense if someone said to me, you know, you could rent a brand new vehicle for $300 a month. It would still yeah. be. Yeah. I mean, if you do it all over like $300 is it's, it's $300 plus the 15s, right? So you're talking, you know, it depends how much you ride. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be more than $300. Um, I don't know. I, it's a tricky thing, right? It's, it depends how you live and where you are. Um, you know, I can see this working in New York and LA, but I'm not sure everywhere else. It's, yeah. It's so to close it up, we'll talk about their IPOs real quick. Uber, that's the one that everybody's waiting for. The, I think the valuation is up to $120 billion with a B, uh, which is completely insane. I mean, if it was if, if the valuation of $120, 120 billion, let's compare it to this. It'd be worth more than Ford, GM, Fiat, and Chrysler combined. <laughs> Think about that. Think about that number right there. Um, and not to mention just last August, the company was worth a, a measly $72 billion. Compare it now to Lyft. Lyft, uh, they, I think they put a number of their valuation. Uh, JP Morgan is going to lead their IPO and their valuation is only $15 billion. Only $15 billion. I mean, we get some big numbers here. The question that still remains is, do these companies make money? Uber, um, Uber has never turned a profit, but they have a lot of a lot more business, business initiatives going. They're trying, you know, we talked about their flying cars and they have the Uber Eats, which is va- valued alone at 20 billion. So they're doing a lot of different things. They're doing the bikes. I think Lyft is doing, but doing, um, isn't Lyft, didn't Lyft get into scooters and bikes? I think they're all into scooters and bikes now. Yeah, Lyft, Lyft actually bought um, Motivate, which is oh, City Bike okay. and, and a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, and then uh, Uber is doing the same thing. Yeah, so we'll see what happens with that. So 2019, something to look out for for the Uber and Lyft IPOs. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about the subscription service, you just go on the Lyft website. And we'll also link it at our website, ecommerceminute.co. Do you have anything else, Bart? Uh, I do not, sir. All right, that's your e-commerce minute for today, episode 333. We'll see you on the internet tomorrow. That's it for today's show. If you like the show, do us a favor and subscribe or leave us a review on iTunes. And don't forget, you can now listen to the e-commerce minute on your Amazon device. Just add e-commerce minute to your flash briefing. And finally, if you have a comment or suggestion or just want to say hi, find us on social media at Sumo Heavy.